What is going on, Panthers Nation? Apologize again for the voice. I'm still drinking the tea. I'm actually recording all these episodes at once. Y'all don't care about that. You want to hear about another coaching candidate. So today, we're going to talk about Bobby Slowick, offensive coordinator for the Houston Texans. And what a season he is having. A season where he has taken C.J. Stroud and this offense and elevated them and gotten them into the playoffs. And if you got to watch the game the other night, put on quite a show. I think CJ ended up with like a little over 200 passing, not 200, but like 260 passing yards, two touchdowns. You know, it's funny when you talk about Bobby Slowick. One, he actually started out defense, working on defense, but when he started off as a, as a videographer, helping up, you know, cut up film for Washington. But let's go ahead, before I jump in too far, let's talk about Bobby. So Bobby, American football coach, like I said, offensive coordinator, playing career. So he did attend Michigan Tech University. He played as a wide receiver for the Huskies in 2006, 2007, and 2008. Started 10 games in 2008. Had 43 receptions, 603 yards, and four touchdowns. Started his career with Washington. And the if you go out to the Houston Texans website again, They have a really nice write-up. For this one, for those who did watch the Ben Johnson, I'm not going to do the same overlay and a bunch of clips and photos. I'm going to try to look at the camera a bit more than looking at my notes. So that's part of the reason I'm not going to do that and why I'm not going to read the entire thing because you can go out there and do that. But he was a defensive assistant with Washington from 2011 to 2013. Moved over to San Francisco where he was a defensive quality control coach. It's kind of funny that an offensive coordinator spent so much time as a defensive assistant, defense quality control coach. I think that does speak to the versatility. If you are thinking about hiring him as a head coach, like, Hey, throw that up there on your resume. I also can do this, this, and this like, why not? With that, he did transition into the, the 49ers started working as an offensive assistant Really got his footing as an offensive pass game specialist and then offensive pass game coordinator. And when you think about the 49ers offense, he had Jimmy Garoppolo, Brock Purdy, Trey Lance. So he worked with a lot of those folks. He was there last year. So he came over when D'Amico Ryan's got the job for Houston and his opportunity to to learn and grow. It's kind of unique, I think, from from my view, just comparing Slowick with Ben Johnson because Ben Johnson was the guy that Started out as like a tight ends coach and was very hands on with a lot of the coaching, you know, position coaching. <clears throat> Whereas Bobby Slowick's been more of this like pass game coordinator, assistant that's helped out along the way. But he's had great success in his first year as an offensive coordinator. And when you think about who he has coached along the way, Debo Samuel, Brendan Ayuk. And last year, of course, he had Christian McCaffrey. But you look at what they were able to do in that offense. I know he wasn't the offensive coordinator, but you look at the success that the offense had. And a lot of that can be attributed to that. And I think is like a pass game coordinator for him being able to navigate each of the quarterbacks that had to go in there, handling their unique skill set like that cannot go unnoticed if if I'm, uh, you know, someone who's evaluating talent. But here he is, you know, he's been in this role for a year as an offensive coordinator. And for me, when I think about him, I kind of feel like he's going to have the bent. Now, I think there probably would or will be a team that may want to go out there and spend a lot of money and give him a payday. And because it is the trendy new name or whoever it is. But it does feel like kind of Ben Johnson-esque for me. I know that Ben Johnson got his opportunity and then turned it down last year. I feel like Slowick's going to be in that same boat. Like I think if he had another year of experience as an offensive coordinator to be able to showcase everything that he's capable of, then it may be a home run. But for me to think that, you know, he can make the jump like one year as a coordinator because there's just a lot of dynamics to being a head coach of a team. And is the CEO model not technically dealing with the roster, but it's a new world. And I know he's just getting his footing in and something Ejero Averro has talked about with moving up into a coordinator role, what that means for him and managing the team and the day-to-day and things that he never thought about having to, to take control of as your 
a position coach or managing the pass pass game, run game, whatever it is. But I, that's not to say that I don't think he's going to get his chance. So he is averaging or helped produce an offense that's 13th in the league with 22.2 points per game. Rushing attack isn't great, 96.9 yards. But I also know that the team itself has had some some injuries to the offense itself that could have you know hindered it. And passing yards, though, 269 yards. And I think if, if C.J. Stroud was healthy, he could have competed for most passing yards in a you know for in on the season. There's there's no doubt in my mind. Biggest stat though is you have a winning record at 10 and 7. They went in to the playoffs or making it into the playoffs. So like what else do you want? Now they're 12 in total yards. I was going to try to pull up the individual stats. Uh, so I talked about CJ Stroud 4100 passing yards. 23 touchdowns, five interceptions, candidate for rookie of the year. So you may chalk that up on his resume. Giving up 38 sacks, 100.8 passer rating. But that's not all. That's not all at all. Rushing attack, they did not have a thousand yard rusher, Devin Singletary, 898 yards. We talked about all the running game not being as great. Uh, Damian Pierce, 416 passing or tearing rushing yards. So Rushing could use some help, but you know when you look at the entire offense and what they've been able to do, I think they're okay. You have Nico Collins putting up a monster year over 1,300 receiving yards. I really like the tight end involvement of Dalton Schultz. It's been a really big security blanket for C.J. Stroud, 635 yards. And then Tank Dell, who got hurt, 709 yards. Robert Woods, 426. When you're putting together a blueprint of a team – and trying to figure out who this team is going to be for the Carolina Panthers. That's something that you're going to have to do is be able to find every single player on this roster contributing that is able to do so. Running back, receiver, tight end, helping out your quarterback. I posted this in another video and or I posted it online talking about the production of yards after catch. The Texans had seven receivers, or excuse me, players with more than 100 yards after catch. They also had 65 big plays. And to to put all that in comparison, I think the Panthers were on 1,300 yards, yards after catch, 35 big plays or 30 big plays, something much smaller. So the big plays, being able to to, to grow and develop a young quarterback, which he's doing with C.J. Stroud, like that's a good pairing. It's a good pairing for this, for the Carolina Panthers, or – as I make this, you know, there could be another team that picks him up who is going to be drafted that Drake May, Caleb Williams, Penix, whoever else is going to be the next guy coming out of this thing next year. So anyways, folks, I, I guess I should say, you know, given an opinion, I do think I like Ben Johnson more, but that's not to say it's like isn't, you know, going to going to vile to be a, a pretty good coach. I do think he needs a little more time. But anyways, that's all I got, folks. See y'all.